Kia ora whanau and welcome to Not A Motorcycle Shop 2.0. Um, things have changed. Uh, notably, we've had a huge redecorate, the pipe bender's gone, we've moved stuff around and it's, it's a place purely of self-indulgence. Well, that being said, on one day into being a student and it's Quarter past four, I didn't get out here till four o'clock today. Bloody hell, you sign up for these courses and they make you do things. Unbelievable. Um, but the last week was my second week of self-indulgence and I managed to get a truckload of stuff done. Um, how much time I'm going to have going forward, I've got no idea, but I made use of the time I had. And once again, let's start at the door. Um, we'll go through bike at a time. Um... The GT240 is now running again. So um, Biff loaned me a stator and I've got, I did a bunch of stuff. I put a long range tank in, um, I changed the primary gearing. So that's now, I've uh, got a 17 tooth front sprocket. Um, it seems good. It's about as good as I can make it. What I need now is K's on it. We'll see how that goes. Um, all right, that's that. The Indian. I spent a few days and that thing is now wired. So it's hard to see. You sort of got to pay attention, but if you look under here, the voltage regulator, everything goes in between the tank. Um, but all of this kind of stuff. Um, all the wiring into the battery, uh, the distributor, um, the wiring through up to the headlight, and the, the main ignition sort of panel. So, I think I've said this before, that's actually Austin 7, and I don't know if you can see that, but that gives you your headlight switch, your ignition switch, uh, I've wired in the ammeter, I don't know if that works, it was a gift from a friend, um, but we'll see um so that's very that's very cool that's coming along um like i say time is what i need now we just got to do the cabling and the plumbing um i bought a bunch of it pre-made but i thought to myself uh you know stuff like um from the carb it's got a fuel filter and then it's all hard copper lines which go up and splits into two for each of the two tanks um i bought all the oil feed lines I didn't buy that. I thought they seemed expensive, but now considering the time I've got and how much effort it's going to take, it actually seems very cheap. We'll see how we go with that. Um, all right, TV175. Uh, I think some of you, I, I think I mentioned before that I had a battery plumbed into it, and the battery, the only thing it was used for was making the brake light go. Look at that. Um, but it wasn't charging. It was just a direct loss system. So I've plumbed in. I bought myself a little BGM six volt voltage regulator. And I found the power feed from the stator and I've just plumbed that in. I plumbed the battery and earthed it. That seems to be good. It seems to be holding a charge. Because these things famously um, leak voltage. So, you know, you connect the battery up to it and a couple of days later you come and it is dead flat. So I'm hoping my little hack here, they were cheap, the little voltage regulators. Um, so we'll just see how that goes and hopefully that's just gonna solve that. Um, and the other big thing, which you may have noticed in the background, is the V8. So we are completely stripped down to components. Um, this block is ready to go to the engine reconditioner. We're gonna have it uh, honed and we've also got over here the crankshaft and we're going to um, have the big end journals and um, the main journals ground we've got some new undersized shells so that should work now this is where i've been struggling the it's a great system and a crap system so if i can just move this in each of the journals you see in here there is a hole now these little plugs go in there 
and when you pop them out um, through centrifugal force when these things spin all the um, silt and sludge and whatnot will gather inside here and obviously it's designed to be cleaned every time you strip it and take it apart well this damn thing this one came out by the grace of all that's holy I don't know I put an allen key on it and just smacked it with a hammer and it slowly turned and came out now there's four of them one on each of the big ends and so far I've managed to round out that one and there's another one here which that one there isn't quite rounded out yet but um, I'm just at the point of like ah crap um, especially when you know I wasn't hurrying but I was just very aware that I had a limited amount of time so I've ordered four more of these little plugs and um, now it's just a matter of getting those out. I mean, a crankshaft is solid, but they're not indestructible. I don't want to be wailing on it with a hammer or, you know, uh, welding to it and shit like that. I don't know. Um, but otherwise, we do have... You can see all that. All the con rods are out. Um, we're going to replace the, the big end shells. The top ends, I'm not sure. I bought replacements. Um, they were suspiciously cheap. Um, made in India but um, I mean they were like three pound each for the the bronze bushes um, and my thought is you know you'd have to get them pressed in and then machined by the engine reconditions anyway but uh, I also bought well, here we go that's uh, the mains and the big ends um, there's all the specs for the engine reconditioners um, I bought new pistons And when you pop the, um, they all come with their own gudgeon pins and the like, you know. And when you pop the gudgeon pin out, it's actually one thou bigger than the ones that have come out. Now, I'm not sure if that's because the ones that have come out are worn, or these are just a thou bigger. But when you put that into there, um, it's a very tight fit. So I'm just wondering whether or not we may get away with just giving that a slight hone or a ream or whatever the engine reconditioners do and that will save me the top ends um and other than that i've got boxes full of gaskets and parts and um like i say now it's just uh get all that to the engine reconditioner let them do their magic and then find the time to throw it all back together again um so there you go like i say um not a motorcycle shop 2.0 it's a really happy place for me to be. I think this is going to be my, um, whenever I need a mental break from study, uh, I will wander out here. But there you go. Now you know as much as me. Um, like I, say, I don't know how much time I'm going to have to do stuff now. So whether I keep doing this, I don't know. Or maybe there'll be boring updates with just tiny little things I do. Anyway. Um, it's nice to see you again. I will um, let you know next week if I've actually done anything. All right, team. Take care of each other. Kaki Tandle.